Welcome to episode 70 of Both Down, the number one Blood Bowl podcast. That has Zima! Oh, Lord. Uh, I'm Steve, a.k.a. Kilowoggy. With me, as always, is Scott Prime. Scott Prime in the house with some Zima! Who's very happy for the return of Zima. I am, and um, but I'm also sad. Why is that? Because I was going to buy a case of this, and you was like, you don't even know if you like it anymore. And you talked me out of it, and you yeah. said, you're low on money. Don't waste it on that. I didn't say that. Or something like that. I don't know. May you, have. you were being dead on me. You were giving me a hard time. Oh, yeah. You said you didn't have enough money for lunch that day. <laughs> but I, no, it wasn't I had money much. for... <laughs> it was very much a dad thing. <laughs> you didn't have enough money for lunch at school today, son. So uh, I was going to get a case of Zima, and Steve's like, no. And I was like, you're right, dad. I was like... Maybe I just need no. a six pack. I might not like it anymore. You could have done the responsible thing and just chugged one in the parking lot, <laughs> and then found out, and mm-hmm. then went back in. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't. And um, they had plenty now, there. Now they're sold out. They did have a bunch. That that store sold out. So I'm gonna have to check one more store, maybe tomorrow, on the way to my parents. Yeah. Well, they'll like that. It's Zima. I mean, people <laughs> love it. I guess. I don't know if they love it. Uh, I don't. The truth is, is I loved it 20 years ago. Right. I probably – I hate to do this because it's like, you know, an old friend that you really liked and then you hung out with them now and you don't like them as much. Yeah, but you've, you've met better and newer friends. Right. I think Grape Smirnoff is the more way to go for <laughs> Scott Prime. But Zemo is still pretty good. This has been Boo's Corner from both down. <laughs> well, now let's talk some wood shop. What have you been up to lately? Well, first off, we apologize for being late. Very late. But we're not really kind of. that late. Well, sort I, of. In my mind, for some reason, we've done some early, so I keep thinking we're still early. Well, we kind of sort of did, but then we always try to be out on the 15th. Maybe we should just try to be out near the 1st. But even if that was the case, we're still late again. We've been busy. We've been very busy this month. Uh, two of the last four weekends, I have been out at my dad's, which he's two hours away from me. And we've been making a game table. For the new kitchen table. Yay. It's been a lot of freaking work. (laughs) In 110 degree heat. And 82% humidity when it wasn't 110. You'd like that. Well, I do. Sure, it's good for you. It probably is good for me, but it's a lot of work. I bet your dad handled it way better than you. I didn't have really any problems. My main problem is just sweat pouring off me getting into my glasses. Yeah, that does suck. Yeah. He has the same problem, so. Sure. No big deal. I've been busy with doing artwork for, I guess I can fully talk about it. They, it looks they like talked it. about it on uh, Zlurpcast. Okay, so I guess this is on the latest episode of Zlurpcast, which I have not listened. Um, they talk about Death Path, which is a game creation from Johnny and Extreme. Over there at Zerpcast Studios, and they asked me to do the artwork, so I've been doing some of the artwork, and I hate saying (laughs) anything about it until it's really, like, on Kickstarter, but it's supposed to go on Kickstarter. He was promoting it left and right, so... Well, I guess it's going to be on Kickstarter in July. I'm scared to freaking death, but, um, yeah, it's turning out so far so good, and... They said nothing but good things. Really? Good. Well, I mean, I guess they have to, because... Yeah, they do kind of have to. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> can't go, well, we really wanted the art to be good, but it kind of sucks, and we don't really have any other options at this point, so... So, yeah, so if the um, you know the first stage of uh, pictures have been done and colored and sent off to Johnny to do... I guess he's doing the graphic design for the cards and stuff. Yeah. So, stage one of my part is done, and then I got plenty more stages to do, and if it funds, I got a lot of artwork to do, so... Right. But yeah, so we had a Morocco Cup, then three die block, then weekend at my dad's, you doing artwork, mm-hmm. Spiky five point five, weekend at my dad's, you doing artwork. <laughs> so we've just not had any time to do anything. We really haven't. And then over the next couple of weeks, I have um, I have to work the shop like crazy this weekend because of magic, mm-hmm. and then I got a wedding to be into. So like. Just busy. But yeah. on the Death Path stuff, go over, check it out, listen to the Zlurpcast, whatever Find it episode on Facebook. it is. Find it on Facebook. There's like a Death Path group or something like that, I think. Yeah. And um, if you're a fan of our podcast or maybe you just like me and not Steve, you know, if the Kickstarter you know, gets going, 
you know, it'd be awesome to support us and get that thing funded. It, it's kind of really cool and like not so cool at the same time. Johnny showed me that uh, he posted the um, whatever you call it. He he put the entry on Game Board Geek. Yeah. So I don't know if anybody can see it or if just he can see it, but I'm listed as a uh, artist on a Game Board Geek game Good. in the database. So it's like I really want this to fund. And let's just give it a shot and see what happens. Good. Like, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, absolutely. And then and then do Bonus Storm. <laughs> a new version. Well. A publishable version. <laughs> well, after the guys also on the Slurpcast, <laughs> Cucumber Sandwich, I, I think we, we could. They were talking to them. I, I heard that. Yeah. I had to back that game. You didn't have to, but you did. No, I had to. My girlfriend laughed so hard at it. I'm dating a 14-year-old boy. I'm just going to take that clip and <laughs> have so much fun with that. The sense of humor of a 14 <laughs> or 13-year-old boy. Right. Probably close to 13. Yeah. Penis makes you laugh. For for real. Yeah. She laughed, laughed at it so much that I, I backed it. I haven't told her I backed it, but I backed it. And if she never knows, then I'll just surprise her. I'll just surprise her with the cucumber sandwich. Yeah. You know, <laughs> in a year and a half when you get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we've been busy, and we played a lot of Blood Bowl in yeah. between. So this episode is going to be just solely tournament talk. So if you don't like that, you can tune out, and we'll be back in a couple of weeks with a new episode. With more tournament talk. No, we'll do a lot of fluff. <laughs> We owe you some fluff. We do owe you some fluff. And we keep talking like we're going to do like a board game podcast over the summer. And now it's like halfway through summer. Yeah. And we haven't we, done it yet. We'll see. There's issues with that. It requires us to play a lot more games than we do. Sure. And we don't have that time. <laughs> Not right now we don't. Uh, see, outside of that, local league's going well. We're losing three people, which sucks. We've gained a couple, which is good. But we're not losing them because they don't like Blood Bowl. No. Two. We're losing them because, like, one's going off to graduate co- school. Another guy's moving for work, I think, right? Well, one guy's leaving for work for a few months. And then one guy is moving with his girlfriend who's doing, or fiance or whatever it is. Right. Who's doing college work. So His shack up girl. Mm-hmm. The shack up. We need you a shack up girl. That should be a Shaquille O'Neal movie. <laughs> Where he's dressed as a woman. Oh, this would be awesome. He's, he's always dressed as drag. Yeah. It's shack up. <laughs> and his, his job is trying to convince a drug lord to marry him. <laughs> so this, that he can get him on uh, charges of sodomy. I don't know what I'm going for here. <laughs> Tax evasion or something. Sure. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Oh, uh, hey, would you? you <laughs> no, you can't see my goodies there. I'm a pure oh, woman. Oh, oh. Oh, I'm a woman. <laughs> you want to play some basketball? <laughs> I don't. Know oh, and then at talks. one episode, he has to like, if it's a do mob a boss, throw. he has to do a free throw like for his life, and he actually makes it <laughs> by accident. If you are truly Shaquille O'Neal, you would not be able to make a free throw. <laughs> Good thing I'm not. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> It almost writes itself. <laughs> okay, that's horrible. We're horrible people. He could play multiple characters. He could play his genie from Kazam. That'd be the sequel when it becomes the true Shack Attack. Oh, okay. Okay, we we don't need to get on tangent this <sighs> early. What if we did a, like a remake of a black exploitation film and he was Shack Zulu? Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, I, I like that. Okay, we'll have to figure that out. Instead well, of Shaft, he's just Shaq. Yeah. Shaq. No. And, That's uh, just too easy. He's a shaq a Khan. <laughs> Ooh, rock me shaq a Khan. Ooh, <laughs> rock me shaq a Khan. Okay. We're going to talk some Blood Bowl <laughs> right after this break. We're coming back with a Moracle Cup first. Do you like Blood Bowl? Well... You're listening to this, so probably yes. How about magic? How about board games? How about just a random assortment of dice or comic books? If you're in or near the Norman, Oklahoma area, come on down to Wizard Asylum, or check them out online at wizardasylum.com 
or on Facebook at Wizards Asylum. All right, we're back, and Steve's going to talk to us about the great Amoracle Cup 2017. You know, I thought by now that uh, we'd kind of give a little bit of time to certain other podcasts who would probably be talking about this. Like? Oh, let's say Skull uh, and Ones. Oh. You know, since they pretty much ran it. Oh, are we breaking their balls right now? Uh, I don't know. No, I just honestly thought they'd have something out by now, so... Well, they might by the time this hits the That's airways, good possibility. but their window is closing. <laughs> you have about two to three days. But I know how it is running a big tournament. You don't want to deal with Blood Bowl for a while. Almost every tournament afterwards, you just go, <sighs> yeah. and then everybody starts going, when's the results for this? When's the results for this up? When's the results for this up? You know what's weird is we had the one, the one Oklahoma Bowl where we had all three podcasts come, and that one wore me out. And I didn't want to deal with Blood Bowl for like a week after that. Okay. But ever since then, it feels like I've gotten through that. You've gotten in shape. Like, You've gotten Blood yeah, Bowl shape. Got, I'm in Blood Bowl shape now. <laughs> it doesn't bother me as much. Like, I finish the tournament, and the next day I go to work. I can talk Blood Bowl or whatever. But. So. So, Morgan Cup. Uh, it was June 3rd and 4th at the Center of the Universe Brewery in Ashland, Virginia. And uh, it was me, Joe Roberts, Scott Hess, and Michael Lewis Brownstone who went together as the uh, Storm Valley Twisters. Nice. And uh, that, since it's a team tournament, you have to have four people on your team. And let's see, I took Pro Elves, so that was Tier 3 for that one. Brownstone took Chaos Dwarves, which was Tier 1. Hess took Norse, which was Tier 2. And Joe took Ogres, which was Tier 4. So, real quick, why don't you tell everybody what the different tiers offered you? Because this turn to me, this tournament was really... From an outsider. Yeah. And it looked like they were trying to balance the tiers, which the tiers are not balanced for a reason. It's it's something that a lot of tournaments are doing. I don't agree with it. Okay. But and I don't know I don't have the <clears throat> specifics in front of me right now, but tier A you got four skills. Okay. All all single. Okay. And tier two would be you got Four skills and one, four regular skills and one double, I oh, think. Okay. And then neither one of those tiers can have star players at all. Then tier C, you can have star players. You got four single skills and two doubles. And then tier D, you think you got four singles and four doubles? Something like that. Okay. Something similar to that. Okay, so we're not going to say it's exact because we right. don't know and we're not going to go. Dig it up right now. Yeah, but I probably should have had. I probably should have done that. <laughs> I said from the beginning when I saw the rules, and this is not a knock on the rules committee for them at all. Yeah, but I wish I could have handpicked. I wish I could have been the the pro wrestling manager. Oh yeah, who handpicked some players because if I remember correctly, tier D or the fourth tier vampires were in there, mm-hmm. and they I were. thought. Good gravy. And underworld. Matt okay. Matt Vanderby, who's a, a wonderful vampire coach on normal even kill bases. Mm-hmm. I would love to give him, you know, double the skills or if not more for his great coaching and vampire team. And I just like that just didn't seem right to me. But I do commend them for trying something different. Now, I don't know if it worked. You can tell me that since I wasn't there. Well, Put it this way. I mean, they had it set up to where tier A was four points, tier B was three points, tier C was two, and D was one. Okay. And they had a special prize if a team had, you know, uh, six points or less. Okay. I believe the team that won it was a six-point or less team. Really? Tragically hit from Canada. Uh Uh-huh. And the number one player was Alex Weiss with Underworld. 
He's a good player normally. No, he's a very good player. No doubt about that. But you give him Underworld with that many skills, it's a little... It's a, he came in first, so put it that way. Hmm. Interesting. Try, okay. Try, trying to see what Vanderbee finished. He finished one ahead of Hess. Hess, Hess with, uh, came in 12th overall with, out of 96 people. Wow. Hess with Norris came in 12th. Vanderbee. Do you remember what tier Norris was? Uh, was yeah, it was B. B, okay. Mm-hmm. And Vanderbee had humans with, uh, he came in 11th. Wow. Yeah. I played elves, and I came in twenty third. Well, wow, that's really good, dude. Yeah, I was one of my. It's actually my best tournament finish, and I guess that's kind of bearing the lead. Not, not bearing the lead. Anyways, whatever that saying yeah. is, I kind of. Thanks for spoiling it, Steed. Search. Pretty much, Steed. Did I just call you Steed? I think you called me Steed. I think I've had too much Zemo. I'm a, over I'm here. a Steed. <laughs> you are a Steed. <laughs> um. <laughs> So, the trip started two days before the tournament on Thursday. Scott Hess, I went up to Tulsa to get Brownstone, and we drove to Virginia. We stopped not a little bit more than halfway there, mm-hmm. stayed over, and then made it in that Friday. So, from Oklahoma, which is the middle of the United States, yeah. how was the drive? Because as a child... I had a wonderful grandma who would just take me from my parents, and, and it felt like we traveled for like a month, and we just meandered around the United States. It's a long drive. But now, was it pretty, like all the little roads and mountains, like I remember it as a child? It was nice. Uh, once we got closer to Virginia, Hess was annoyed because it just turned into a tower, a, a, a tunnel of trees. <laughs> that, all you see right. is trees on both sides of the road, and you can't see past it. Okay. And it's kind of weird because Oklahoma, you look to the side of the road and you can see, you know, forever. A hundred miles. Right. No problem. Uh, so that was different. The way back, we went through West Virginia. The way up, we went through Tennessee and stuff. And it was, okay. you know, it was nice. It wasn't nothing too incredibly amazing. We stopped at a place that was a Civil War battleground because uh, Brownstone wanted to see it. And that's pretty neat. And then, but on the way back, we went through West Virginia, and that was beautiful. Seeing all those mountains and then coming down through Illinois and stuff. So Mm -hmm. that was much better the way back. That's good. But the way there, we just wanted to get there. We got there Friday. Hess Hess drove the whole way. So he he was tired. He decided to stay in the hotel. And uh, Michael Lewis and I decided we had to go pick up Joe Roberts. At the airport. So we went to... Uh, we're just outside of Richmond. So we went to downtown Richmond. Found a really cool old Irish pub. And got dinner. And then picked him up and went back to the... Did room. you get drunk? No. <clears throat> no. No, Lewis had, I think, two beers? Ooh, maybe. he was drunk. Yeah. No, he got drunk later in the weekend. That was <laughs> oh, a whole okay. different thing. I was not insinuating anything, but... No, no, no. I was more giving you a hard time because no. everybody knows you don't drink. Uh, I don't think everybody knows that, but no, I don't. Okay. Yeah. Steve Straight Edge. I'm not, well, I don't, I don't Do you, know what all that comes with. Uh, we're just going to say Kilowoggy Straight Edge is no tattoos. Do you have any tattoos? I do not. Um, do you drink? No. Do you do drugs? No. And he doesn't have sex, so therefore he's really Kilowoggy Straight Edge. <laughs> I knew I was walking into something. <laughs> Sorry. I was trying to remember what straight edge was because I thought I'm like it doesn't have something to do with hair like you have to get short haircut or something <laughs> from what, what is emo I don't man, know from what wrestling has taught me you just don't do drugs and you don't yeah drink. you're right <laughs> and sadly you're right <laughs> <laughs> but so anyways the tournament was Saturday we got there and you know it was at a brewery got there early. And there was just a ton of people. And oh, I bet. There's 96 people in a space that probably should hold 75. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you felt a little. It was a little cramped. Sure. But that's, you know, it is what it is. Okay. Um, I think we're 
I think it's safe to say we're very spoiled at Chaos Cup because yes. those rooms at Chaos Cup could probably hold 150, and most of the time there's you know 80 to 90 yeah. of us, so it feels a little bit more relaxed for a big tournament. And I'm, I'm 100 not complaining. Oklahoma Bowl gets cramped too. Sure, I mean that's just no. That's what I'm saying. I think we're spoiled. Have. Yeah. From our viewpoint, our vantage point of a yeah. big tournament. I personally prefer it at a hotel because you do have that more space. And also, everybody seemed to be at different places. There were some people who stayed with friends. Some people rented a house. Some people got hotel rooms at this oh, place. Oh, I didn't even think about that. that so place. you kind of missed out on the like camaraderie of it all. Of just hanging out afterwards. Yeah. And, okay. It was pretty much once you got done... We broke for dinner and didn't see anybody until the next day. Oh, I, I didn't and even then think about that. Sunday, Sunday was a whole deal, and I'll get to that. Okay. Uh, so let me go through my matches, and I'll just do it real quick. Started off, uh, my team was the Moreland Storm Ravens. And big shout out to Maelstrom Gaming or Maelstrom Designs, Jack over there. He helped do some neoprene pitches. So each one of our team had a, a pitch, same design, but different logos in the middle. And Steve's forgetting this, or he was about to talk about this, but um, he got uh, Dustin Parsons. Y'all all commissioned Dustin Parsons mm-hmm. to paint y'all's teams. So to match Joe Roberts, whose team was already done. Right. So yeah. you, everybody had black and orange type mm-hmm. colors, and you had play mats that all were very similar. You had the same designer yeah. design your logos. Really cool idea. Yeah, and we all had T-shirts. We had two separate T-shirts, one which had um, our team logo, which we the first day we wore orange T-shirts with the team logo on front, and then on back we had our NAF name and the number of our tier that we were playing. Oh, that's cool. So mine cool. said Kilowog 103. Hmm. And then the second day, we had our individual team logo on the shirt, and it was black, and then the same on the back. That's neat. So it was, you know, we got to do that. We had our own custom pitches. It just made the whole experience more fun. We all had the same looking team. So all that effort and money, <clears throat> did people come up to you and when they sat down go, this is cool, you guys are all matching? We had some. Okay. But mostly the pitches everyone loved. Yeah, well, I love that. They were awesome, and they came in awesome tubes, so we just rolled them up, swapped, put them in individual tubes. It made things so nice. That's cool. The The first match I played, uh, Denny Franks, I believe he's a newer player. He's playing Orcs. And I thought that this was going to be a horrible weekend because he was just pulling everything off. And... I hope he's newer because he was doing things that he really shouldn't do. One of those times where it feels like, you know, they're going for every turn and not failing. He's making passes with players he shouldn't and making longer passes. Well, you just said he played orcs if he's passing. uh Yeah. (laughs) He played a style that was not what I was expecting, and it allowed him to get up on me real fast. Okay. And then he was just destroying my armor. And I ended up losing two to nothing. Wow. It was not a good time. Um, Because I honestly thought I was going to win. I probably didn't take it because I heard, you know, he's not that new. He's kind of new and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I should. Oh, what's happening? Oh, crap. I I lost. (laughs) It happens. That round, I forgot to get what we did as a team i think we tied that round because the way it worked is if a player won they got uh, i forget how this worked now two points if you tied you got one and then if you lost you got zero so whoever had the most between the other team so if two members of our team won and two lost then it's four to four between the two teams. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we tied that round. So next round, I played Manuel de Klerk, who is from uh, Canada, and he was playing Salon, and I ended up beating him one to nothing. On that, he played a little timid at the beginning, because I believe I played smart this tournament. 
for the first time ever. Every time I had the choice, I kicked the ball and made it to where all I had to do was stop him, and then I'd receive the ball second half, and I could just run down the field and score and win. It's exactly what I did on this one. A kick to him. He didn't push forward as much as he probably should have. He had slons. So I think he was kind of worried about getting hurt. Well, by not pushing forward, I was able to make a couple of dots. I'm playing with Jordell. That's why I took Elves, so uh-huh. I could play with Jordell. And I was able to get in with Jordell, knock the ball loose. He wasn't able to get it again. And then I got the ball second half, went down the field. I was hurting him, and then I just caged up in the end. Caged up in the end zone for turns. Like so many matches this tournament, I had Jordell with the ball one square away from the end zone with a cloud of people around him. People can't get to me. And I would just sit there. It's not fun, but it's what you do. Mm-hmm. So ended up winning that one. Believe the team won that one. So then I played Alan Burroughs and his Chaos Pack team. That one, he just had horrible luck. He's playing Chaos Pact, and he has a Minotaur that he gets both down on and against one of my guys on the line. First turn, casualties himself. <laughs> well, technically, I casualty him because it was a both down. Sure. But he decided to play the game of, well, I have Mighty Blow. Maybe I'll hurt you, and I casualty him. Then he had an ogre, and he went to blitz with him, and he was tied up with one of my guys and didn't see him because his ogre was so big. So he moved. I'm like, oh, you have to dodge. And he goes, oh, man, I didn't see that. I go, you don't have to do it. It's fine. You know, I perfectly understand. Sure, no dice have been rolled. Yeah. You didn't see it. I, I don't care. <laughs> he goes, no, no, it's okay. You know, the Minotaur can do it, so why can't the ogre? One cracked his armor, casualtyed. <laughs> so by turn two, he's out two big guys. Yeah. And it just went worse. I mean, I ended up winning that one two to nothing. And I think I out casualtyed him, which was sad. And then game four, I played David, Canada, his goblins. Uh, David Tellis? Yes. Okay. And that one, it was a pain in the butt. His his uh, loony was it? not the loony. Is this the when you played chain. Alex Weiss's team? Yeah. It's okay. tra- he was part of the Tragically Hip. Okay. So his ball and chain guy was tearing me up and you know i was you know avoiding people and doing what i had to do but his ball and chain for whatever reason was just coming up and getting me when he'd get somebody he'd take him down and i kept trying and trying and trying to get you know away from him or whatever but so things are not going well and he scores on me i believe and the one thing that really, really pissed me off about this tournament, more than anything, is they allowed the argue the call. You know, the head coach thing? Yeah, we can speak about that in okay. some of my future tournaments, too. So, I'm not a fan of that. <clears throat> but, I'm even more not a fan of it when they tell you you don't have to have a head coach model. Right. As like, because his he used a bribe and then... Um, I think he scored before the second half. So at half, he had to use. He, you know, he, I thought his ball and chain was going to be gone. All right. Or I sc- scored real quick to get rid of him. I can't remember which. And then he's like, "Okay, I'm going to argue the call." I'm like, "Oh man, I forgot about that." And I'm like, "Oh, where's your head coach? Oh, f- damn it! You don't have to have one." Right. And of course, he got a six. It's like, damn it. So, ball and chain came back. It was a big old pain in the butt however it was a it was a great game he played amazingly well i ended up pulling out a two to one victory Hmm. so end of the day i'm three wins and one loss that's good i was very happy Uh, then that night we went out with brian two and his team to uh texas roadhouse the rocky mountain rampage rampage just rampage okay Mm -hmm. Uh, got to beat Mark Perry, uh-huh. so that was very nice. Uh, let's see. And Anthony was on his team. 
and uh, Rich. But Mark Perry didn't go to dinner with us because, you know. Well, he's uppity. Yeah, he's kind of uppity. He's like, I run <laughs> tournaments every two weeks. Sometimes even three <laughs> tournaments in a weekend. I'm uppity. Uh, Just teasing Mark. He doesn't like you. <laughs> he loves me. No, I mean, you don't like him. No, I'm just kidding. He loves me. <laughs> I know. So that was pretty he, much. Did I tell you before the tournament, he kept asking me to uh, both down and prove his team. <laughs> and I kept going like, uh, I'm not working right now and all this stuff. <laughs> Trying to nicely go, I don't like it. Uh, I love the models. Yeah. I get it. He was doing nuns. Yeah. But, there was a lot of the nun teams there. Really? There was so many. Speaking of. My first game the next day was against Stephen Holowitz. Holowitz? I don't know what his name is. Mm-hmm. Um, Barry real, Horowitz from WWE. <laughs> I don't think so. Really nice guy. He was playing Slon, and he was playing with the Nun Models, the World Cup team. Okay. Those Nun. Okay. What, what those nun, yeah, those are Nuns. So his team, he uh, color-coded the gloves of the Nuns to be the positions. Was it hard to? It wasn't too bad. Okay. It's he, you know, he was fine elsewhere, so it was okay. That one, I just screwed up. I I had um, Jordell with the ball, and I'm going down the sidelines, and uh, I decide he's got a guy in front of me. He's got a guy on me with ten, tentacle, uh, not tentacles. Was it tentacles? Shadowing. So I say he doesn't have tentacles if he's frogs. No, he had shadowing. Frogs with shadowing and diving tackle, yeah, and wrestle and just stand firm. That's what it was. His his blitzers had stand firm and uh, guard shadowing. Shadowing. Okay. So they were a pain in the butt. I remember you saying this. They. This was the worst team I played the whole time, just because that stand firm was killing me. Because try to hit him away and you don't, and then you got to try to dodge and they have diving tackle. It's like if ah. you can't knock down the stand firm guys, you're in trouble. Yeah, I mean, that, it's such a pain in the butt. That was a great build. Um, so I've got Jordell, and he's got a guy on me by the sideline, and there's an empty square in front of me, and a guy in the square next uh, in front of that. So I decided to dodge, basically blitzed, because I was going to dodge around this guy and go into open field, but I knew that if I failed my dodge, I could just roll a block and, you know, pretty much be fine, as long as I don't get a skull. Right. So I fail my dodge, use my dodge skill, succeed. So I'm in the square, and I'm at the point where I could push the guy out of bounds if I get the right result. Mm-hmm. So I decide to do the the block from the blitz. Mm-hmm. I get both down. I forgot he had wrestle. <laughs> so he takes me down. I lose the ball. And then the ball goes bouncing. And now it's his turn. He gets the ball. Dun, 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 dun. Leap. Dun, 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 dun. Hand off. And score. He, he, it was just a. It was a pain. It was the most annoying game the whole time. I lost sure. three to one. Really, this is not being braggadocio or anything. It's two to one. I just gave up at the last, the last three or four turns. I'm like, I, I can't do anything. Screw it. Whatever. Right. I was probably being a little bit of a jerk, and I apologize if I was. But right before that match, God, why wasn't I around when you were being a turd? Wasn't being that big of a turd. But oh. So, I'm a bigger turd than you. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> so, part of the problem was right before that match, you know, we came early, well, sort of early. I was supposed to get there real early to do the podcast because oh. they were going to record. Maybe that's why their podcast is not out yet because they're waiting for you to no. show up and podcast with them. <laughs> no. Uh, we ended up going to a breakfast place that was really good. But very chatty and very slow. Oh, did you have old Flo who wanted just to talk your ear off? Uh, sort of. We haven't seen people around here. Younger these guy. Oh. Just very friendly. Oh, so he was hitting on Michael. Might have been. Yeah. Or you. Uh, no. And you said, no way, dude. I'm straight edge. He's like, oh, no sex. I'm moving <laughs> on to Michael Brownstone. 
No, he was just really nice, and we got to talking and all this. And so we got there kind of running late, so where people were already setting up. And I was like, crap. And then I look at my phone, and Hess didn't come with because he was wanting to sleep in. Sure. And he decided to drive separately. So I'd been posting pictures and stuff on the Twitter and the Facebook the whole time. So I turned off notifications. You said that like my dad would. The Twitter. The Twitter and the Facebook. Yeah. I meant the Facebook. They're both down Facebook accounts. I, <laughs> I know what you meant, but I you said it like it. my father. I know. And anyways, <clears throat> since I did that, I turned off notifications on my phone. So it was on silent. So I'm going to get set up, and I look at my phone. I've got 18 missed phone calls. Oh, no. And I've got a message from Scott Hess. I got like three messages from Scott Hess saying, call me now. It's an emergency. Oh, no. I call him. He blew a tire. Oh, no. And so he had to get, he had to leave the car there, get an Uber to the tournament, and he was like five minutes late. So I'm freaking out trying to figure out, you know, what to do, checking with Jeremiah and like, okay, what happens if someone doesn't show, blah, blah, blah. Luckily, he was able to show. But then for lunch, basically, he called around all of Virginia trying to find a tire for his car. Yeah, his monster truck. Yeah, he's got a giant, <laughs> what is it, Expedition? I don't know what it I is. Don't know. It's big. It's roomy, but it's big. Yeah, it's a big Ford. I think it's Expedition. But it has four Doom wheels on it that you had to... <laughs> when he bought it, it basically has pimp wheels. And oh. he didn't know the special type of wheels. So nobody had the size of tire that he needed. He had to call to 30 different places. Michael and I thought we were going to have to rent a car to drive back oh, by ourselves. No. And Scott thought he was going to have to stay there until Wednesday till the tire could get there. Wow. And so we we're just all freaking out about this. And then he, finally he finds one. He was able to get it sent the next morning to the place right by our hotel. So that was all good. But that whole round is just like, oh, crap, what are we doing? What are we going to do? I still would have lost. So I'm not saying that. I'm just saying sure. that was just a pain in the butt. Then the final round, I played Kevin Swiger and his elves. And this one, again, I just played the game of kicking the ball, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I ended up winning two to one. I guarantee you the last six, five or six plays of the second half was just me on the end zone with Jordell with a cloud of people around me. Sure. And he was doing everything he could to get to me. And at the end, the last play, I had a full solid line of people surrounding Jordell to where he couldn't hit him, he couldn't get anywhere close. And then I just walked in, got a two-to-one win. I went four wins, two losses. That was my best tournament by far. And I believe now I'm the fourth-ranked fourth ranked Elf coach in America? After one tournament. Yeah. Because the double points. Well, two tournaments. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Two I won Buccaneer Bowl first year with him. If you do good at a Blood Bowl tournament, it gives you double points, mm -hmm. you really skyrocket. And I, if you do bad, like letting everybody score touchdowns <laughs> on you, <laughs> it could be really bad. Yeah. I might end up taking these to Chaos Cups since I already have the pitch and painted and everything. That's cool. It'd be fun. Yeah. But then we drove back. As I said, West Virginia is pretty. Um, don't get sushi in Louisville. It sucked. And eh, not much else to really report. It was a great time. Big props to everyone for pulling off it, pulling it off. And okay, so can I ask and just play devil's advocate here? Did sure. you like the, after the tournament? Did you like the unbalanced tier system thingy? No. Not, not at all. all. Okay. No, it's not something I'd like at all. Okay. I. There are people who are in, in discussions talking about is it, did it break things? Did things play out wrong? Underworld came in first. That to me is enough. Underworld was like three of the top 10 teams. Oh, really? Yeah, it was disproportionately. Okay, so it wasn't just. It's hard to say abnormal for alex weiss because he's a very good coach in all forms of i'm blood sure blood. the other ones are too that's the thing though but they those teams are not meant to be that i wonder why vanderby didn't take vampires i don't know 
I mean, he couldn't a, tell you. He uh, did eleventh with humans, so that's he's pretty probably dang good. just like we did. We probably you know just did the four three two one mm. build. I believe if we had taken lesser teams, we would have done better. I would say that confidently. Big, and that's thunder. And that's thunder. Yeah, we're getting blitzed by a thunderstorm right now. Um, I, I will say that because like Michael Lewis's chaos doors, which come with some chaos doors, which are good. Only four skills spread out. He it's not did that much. Very poorly, yeah. and he's a good coach. It was a huh. very rough tournament for him. Um, I will say, and again, this is not a knock. They did the pairings improperly. So, how, how so? On the teams, when you match up after the first round, okay, you know, it's supposed to go by record first, and then. Touchdown, net touchdowns and casualties, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So mm. what but what happened though is that was to determine who got matched up with who. Okay. So people with the better records should play the people with the better better records. Right. If you win round one, yeah. you're gonna play somebody else who also probably yeah, if it's won round four round. and I've got a team that has one guy with three wins and one guy with two wins and a loss and et cetera, et cetera. Then you have a team guy with three wins, and et cetera. Those okay. three wins guys should play each other. Okay. However, what happened was we started out doing net casualties and touchdowns. Okay. But Joe Roberts playing Ogres dominated his first round guy. And had a plus 12, I think, for net casualties and touchdowns. So your your tier 4 team was always the top? Every round but it one. Because it didn't go by record, it went by that instead? It did not go by record, it went by net. <laughs> so, wow. over Joe, our ogre guy, went up against the top team by the same criteria. And he played one other ogre team, so I'm sure it happened to that guy too. Mm -hmm. But that, I think, probably also skewed things. Okay, I it would take a lot more digging into to actually see how it would have played out differently. But so I don't really know if that's an issue. Okay, but it's definitely an incorrect thing. Okay, and we found out about it afterwards, and again. But everybody did it. Everybody did it. Oh, okay. So well, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It was just, it was just definitely the ogre team should not have been playing the best teams. Right. Unless but, they're 4-0. No. Yeah. I mean, if they're 4-0, no, more power to you. Right. Um, but yeah, again, Chaos Dwarves did exceedingly poor. There was only one orc team in the whole tournament. Really? Yeah. With a new addition to Blood Bowl. That's mm -hmm. surprising. Well, because orcs were tier A. It wasn't what? worth it. That's okay. what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what the tiers are, but I don't think I agree with this. But what, I'm also the old school guy that, you know, like you hear about those tiers like they came up with with the rules committee back mm -hmm. in 5th and 6th edition of the LRB where like most of the teams are tier 1, a few teams are tier 2, yeah, and the stunty teams are tier 3. That's what I like to go by. I agree. And I get it. There's sub tiers in within tier one i get that yeah. i mean wood elves are totally different than kimry i get that mm -hmm. but uh, i don't know i'm not a big tier guy no outside of how they've designed it and we're also not big skill package guys either no i just i no we're much more fans of here's enough money to build your team and take skills do what you want right we can talk about that more later um let's see anything else Overall fun time. Glad you went. Exceedingly fun. Very glad I went. Met a lot of great people. I'll give more shout outs at the end when I do shout outs. Okay. Um, very happy to go. Everything ran pretty smoothly. Tell me about the swag. You guys got free block dice. You guys got no. free dice. You got yes. free ogres and stuff like yeah. that, right? We got three models. Okay. Which the... This is not speaking out of turn. Uh, the, the the actual sculpts were awesome. Okay. The resin versions that we received were not so much. Oh, okay. Uh, there was an issue with the people who doing the resin. Like, 
the the wind. I was never a big fan of the Wendigo thing. Uh-huh. I love the Bison guy. The Bison guy is awesome. The Luchador guy is pretty cool. And then the Wendigo thing, I was like, eh, whatever. But the Wendigo guy that I have and Michael have has a two left feet. For real? Not like both feet are left, but the left foot has another left foot cast on top of it. It's oh, weird. like a miscast yeah, or something? Yeah, like but both of them up. has it. Huh. And it's not that it wasn't clean. It's just, I don't understand it. So, sure. Uh, we did get two D6s. Uh, there were four designs. Um, what? I, how does that work? Just how it is. There were four designs. You got two. So I tried to buy the other ones to match, you know, to get one of each. And they didn't have all of them. So luckily, you know, the reason we have the complete set is Scott Hess had the design that I needed. So I was able to get that. That's cool. Um, let's see, what else did we get? We got, we got the block some dice. cool tokens. Didn't get the block dice. We had to buy the block dice. Oh. We got a free glass. That was pretty neat. Okay. Only one broke. So the whole weekend. <laughs> the only one out of you four? No, not us. The whole Just group? The whole area that I saw, there's only one that broke. We That's were right cool. by it when it broke. Maybe there were others that did, but there was only one by That's us cool. that broke. Um, some people were complaining about those because they, it's hard to travel with glass when you're flying. Mm, I could see that. Um, but still, it was cool. It had some of the universe on it. I used it mainly I, in between rounds. I put all my uh, dice and everything in it so I could move it around easier. Oh, that's cool. Uh, we got some little tokens to put on the thing for re-rolls and stuff, so that was all pretty cool. Nice. I think that was it. They had some stuff for sale from the store, basically just new stuff. I think that's pretty much it. They had food trucks. I didn't partake either day. Because you're straight edge. Totes, totes straight edge. Right. Um, but, yeah, it was it was a great time. And I know it's a lot of hassle to put put it on and everything. So oh, they I did bet. a great job. For a hundred, nearly 100 people? Yeah. First time doing it for them? Yeah. Something, probably something this big is what oh, we're no doubt. At. Yeah. So. I think technically it's the biggest North American tournament. Or it's probably might be tied with Chaos Cup one year. Did Chaos Cup get 96? I don't know if it got 96 or 94. It got 90, over 90 one time. Yeah, 94 sounds more accurate, but I don't no. know. So that's still awesome. Yeah. Well, congrats everybody who went to a Moracle Cup. I hope everybody made it home safely. I'm sure they did since we haven't heard anything. Haven't heard anything about anyone dying. And um, Oh, so our adventure. Um, oh, okay. You had the so adventure. So the car, you know, it lost a, a wheel on us. Mm-hmm. That screwed everything up. We were going to go to the beach because we're about an hour away from the ocean. And but then the car screwed up, so we couldn't. However, Brad Wells was there from Houston, and he happened to be staying in the same hotel as us. So he was able to help us out with you know getting Hess to the car. And we were able to get ride with someone back to the hotel. And then we were going to go with Brad to the ocean for dinner, hang out, come sure. back. So Brad's on Facebook posting that he's in Virginia, and he gets a message from a cousin he hasn't seen in 30 years. He goes, where are you at? He goes, I'm I'm right outside Richmond. He goes, dude, you're like five minutes away from me. So we lost our ride, and he went to hang oh, out with his cousin. Oh, Brad. This guy's so important that I you know. haven't seen him in 30 years, and you ditch your friends. So I can't really complain about that. Was it a girl cousin? That's disturbing, but no. Well, well, I don't know, know what the implica- I mean, implication was. I mean, let's see. Brad's probably my age ish, so anywhere from forty five to thirty five. If it was a girl cousin, you know, maybe they had a I think moment. Brad's older than you. Okay, well, maybe they had a moment. Mel- when they yellow were don't mellow. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought he's Mexican. No, he's Asian. He's Asian. He's Hawaiian. He's from one of the islands. No, he. I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> I know. Um. But yeah, so 
Instead of going to the ocean, we ended up going to the mall that was right across the way. <laughs> Dude, you and Michael Lewis and your fascination, son. Let's go to the mall and eat. It is not no, 1985. We didn't go to the mall to eat. There you can't go to Orange Julius and go to the taco stand. We literally walked in the mall. Everything was closing. We walked out of the mall, went to a Mexican place. See? I was right. And I didn't even know the story. What? <laughs> you went to a Mexican food place. There was nothing else around. Okay. Within walking distance. We had no car. All right. God. All right. All right. I just know chaos cap. You guys had to go to the the mall with the and we had to carry the giant dog who ejaculated all over Michael. Not at all what happened, but okay. It was terrible. We all decided to go to the mall. I, I, we don't need to argue about this, Steve. There's no arguing. Look, look, you you might be the straight edge steed, Steve, but you I get it. I get it. Scott's drinking the Zima. (laughs) So he's a little on happy Scott mode. Kind of. So next segment will be about Three Die Block. Yes. And their tournament. Let's end this and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back and we're going to hear about Scott and his adventure to Iowa. That's right. And we're probably going to hear a lot of thunder. Lots of thunder. This is Oklahoma City. Thunder. Home of the thunder. That's right. <laughs> um, so Three Die Brawl happened on June 10th, and then there was the Braft on June 11th. Me and the lovely Jennifer decided to leave on a Thursday night. We kind of wanted to take our time getting there, so we left uh, Thursday evening. We drove about halfway to Overland Park, Kansas. Home of Joe Roberts. Home of Joe Roberts, which we found out a week later. Um, We went up there, stayed in a cool little hotel, ate some terrible Mexican food. Okay, this is actually a funny story. Sure. You ate at... Jose Peppers. Jose Peppers. Which was the highest recommendation from the fat old lady that checked us into the hotel. So, it was lousy Mexican food. Oh, it was pretty terrible. And when you tell me the story, I was like... That's funny. When we went to Kansas, Michael and I ate at a lousy Mexican place, too. It was called Jose Peppers. They're a chain, and they all suck, apparently. I I could tell it sucked. I didn't want to get, like, too foodie on the podcast, but let's (laughs) do it. I could kind of tell it sucked. So, like, I decided they had some appetizers that were, like, basically, um, you know, jalapeno poppers, but Mm -hmm. big ones. They're supposed to be big. And they had a site, you get four of them for like eight bucks or two of them for six bucks. I decided I'm not going to eat a 10 or $12 crappy Mexican food meal. I'm just going to get these appetizers. Right. Best choice I made. I got the two loaded peppers. It was really good. They had like chicken and cream cheese and all this stuff. That was decent. We realized it's a crappy Mexican place when you go in and on the appetizer list is queso. Right, because... And you don't get free queso. So everybody in the world, here in Moore, Oklahoma, or Norman, or even in Oklahoma City... Or South. Almost, almost every Mexican food place now, when you go sit down, you get your chips and salsa for free. You get your cheese sauce or queso for free. And usually you get tortillas for free. Flour or corn. Flour or corn. And sometimes and can, the little pickled carrots yeah, and you can get peppers. Uh, relish, uh, the... What is it? Corn relish, and you can get hard salsa. Yeah, you can get all this stuff for free. More on that when we talk about Spiky Cup. But sure, we're pretty spoiled. <clears throat> so most other places really suck. Yeah, we had to pay for queso. Yeah, which was never like, pay for queso, no. and it sucked. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't very good. So the best thing was eating those stuffed peppers, and then that gave me like terrible heartburn throughout mm-hmm. the night. But. Anyways, we ate there. And we you uh, didn't take the little bag of antacids that I gave you, did you? I did, and I oh. used them. Okay. So, thank Good. you. You helped me out again, Dad. Yay! The straight edge steed, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> that's the triple S. Is that right? Straight edge, if that's one word. Steed. Yeah, I guess so. Steve. I just like the straight edge steed. That's you. The straight edge steed. <laughs> The most boring horse in the world. Yeah, he's like he's really conservative. Um, it, w- thing is, whenever someone asks him to do drugs, uh-huh. he just says nay. Nay. 
<laughs> that's good. No, that's bad. <laughs> uh, next morning, which was really, I mean, if you're a chubby guy, even though you're trying to watch your weight, the kolache factory is an amazing uh, little chain of kolache stuffed food inside of a pastry. And I'm sure we've talked about this before. Oh, we we have. But I know. they're not. I mean, they're sort of real kolaches. They're different types of kolaches. They're, when you think, if you know what a kolache is, generally you think about a puffed pastry with a dollop of preserve or something on top. These are these are snowballs with food inside. Yeah. Of them. They're bread balls with food inside. Yeah, they're pretty amazing. So Which me, I love bread and I love food. I'm not a fan of these, except oh. the barbecue one. I like the barbecue I, one. I am shocked that you don't like this. But anyways, me and Jennifer, we found that place. We got some breakfast there. And then we loaded up on the kolaches because we're going to Drew's house. Drew Bucciconi of 3 Die Block. Um, and so we bought a bunch of kolaches so we could have for breakfast the next couple of days. Mm-hmm. And we've done this before when we traveled to Texas, so we know they keep well. We took an ice chest and everything with us, so we were like real roadies, you know. So then we headed up to um, the brawl, and um, we got to Drew's house oh, about 1, 2 o'clock on Friday. Plenty of time. Uh, Jennifer and Drew played a, a half or so of Blood Bowl because she was tired of playing me. She's like, that guy makes me nervous. He feels like he's judging me on everything I do. Mm-hmm. I'm sure I was bothering her. Um, so she played a practice game with Drew, and I went and jogged. And I I made the mistake of going up Drew's. <laughs> I should have went right, and instead I went left. And Drew lives on the bottom of a hill. I can't believe I made it without stopping. I felt like Rocky in the rocky movie like i achieved something i don't think rocky was texting his friend going this is killing me i'm going to die <laughs> well, he might have been in the new version he'll be, he will be <laughs> um so i went and jogged believe it or not and that was the last time i was healthy on the rest of that trip uh, came back they finished up their game drew cooked out um uh, jeff stegi one of the local guys came over with his wife and kid and then later that night, um, a guy named Matthew Kramer, which we only called him Kramer the whole weekend, and Duder, which his name is Derek Sedergren or something. Mm-hmm. I can't remember his last name exactly. Anyways, Derek and uh, Kramer showed up from Wisconsin, Minnesota area, and we played games. We played um, played that stupid cyanide and happiness game. What was it called? Motion explosion or no, fully loaded or fully no. explosion no, <laughs> whatever it is I don't remember it's the happiness and cyanide game cyanide That's, and happiness whatever that game is it's very similar to apples to apples but with little cartoon strips it was actually if I have to play one of those games it was at, I at least laughed and I really tried not to laugh in the other ones right. I was trying not to actually be happy but for as was, much as Scott loves games he hates party games. I hate the ones where there's no point. It's just throw something out random. This one didn't feel like that. There's no point in any game. This game you made little cartoons. Yeah. And so you were adding the third panel. So it felt like you were really making a conscious decision on like how to make this cartoon pop. Instead of like apples to apples where somebody goes, oh, yeah, apples. It is kind of like a cloud. And then they just pick it and you go, "What, what are you talking about? Okay. So a little bit less subjectivity. Yes. In my... In my opinion. Okay. So we played some of that. Then we played the game of Raiders of the North Sea. Derek dominated us in that happiness and cyanide game. I don't know how, but we laughed the most. We, we got to go with this one. It was always Derek. So hmm. it, was, it was fun. We played uh, Raiders of the North Sea. Uh, Jennifer dominated us on that. And then um, I think we played something. Maybe we didn't. I think we sat around and talked a lot, so it felt like we played more games. Yeah. Went to bed, got up early the next morning, had kolaches for breakfast. They were amazing. Went on down to the three dub brawl. Um, there was already guys waiting at the shop when we got there. Went in, helped Drew set up. Uh, they had 20 people, um, which was not no, a bad turnout. No me, no Lewis, because we were out from the I think, previous week. I'm assuming the Moracle no Cup hurt Brian, them. too, because of the previous week. Sure. I'm assuming the Moracle Cup cost them at least... Three to five people easily. I would, yeah, <clears throat> I would think so. Um, first round, uh, I took halflings. I got to admit, I kind of, I feel like I cheated the system, but I didn't. I wasn't. I just, 
I don't like playing the same team in like a smaller tournament if I can avoid it. And I know you can't ask the TO what teams aren't taken because then you could kind of metagame that. Right. Like, so I just made three teams up. I submitted them all to Drew, and I said, whatever's not taken, I'll take that team. To be fair, that's also a tournament where there were two people that walked in with not even registering beforehand, right? There was three like that. Okay. And then there were other people who registered but had multiple teams ready to go. I, I believe so. they were so. a little loosey-goosey on the Oh, well, I asked him. I was like, this is where I'm going. I, I said, can you just tell me which of these teams are not taken? And he goes, well, I can't because nobody turned in rosters. We didn't make anybody. Right. I don't and know I was how like, to oh, do that. Okay. So I just gave him three rosters, and I said, if any of these are taken, then I'll make my choice. And I even told Jennifer, if, if none of them are taken, I'll take this one first, this yeah. one second, this one third. Ironically enough, uh, I had Amazon's built, Lizardmen built, and Halflings. Mm-hmm. And... That day of, two guys walked in playing Lizards and Amazons, so I played Halflings. There was no other Halfling team, so I, I played my Halflings. And Jen was playing Dwarves? She was playing Dwarves, um, standard kind of Dwarf build. Um, first round, I played Kramer, who was playing Dwarves. This guy, he's quite the character. I don't know how to explain to him. He's just one of those guys you want to hang out with. Is he one of the guys that you feel like you could live across the hall from you and could just come into your place any time? Yes. And, like, people would just applaud? Right. Okay. He'd just come in and he has something crazy. Yeah. No, he's he's just laid back. He's fun. He just likes life. He's just one of those happy souls. Good. Um, anyways. And then you crushed him and made him feel bad. No. No, no not at <laughs> With all. With halflings against dwarves. Halflings versus dwarves. <laughs> There's oh no way gosh. that goes well. Um, so, he has chainsaw... He, I can't remember his exact build, and I'm sorry, guys, for the, the brawl and stuff. I lost my rosters. I don't know where they're at. I, we looked for them. Um, he had the chainsaw for sure. They also played with the argue the call rule, and you didn't have to have a model. Really? Yeah. Okay, all TOs from here on out either don't do the rule or at least make people have the freaking model. It doesn't matter, Steve. It's not hard. No, it doesn't matter because they're just going to pick their number 16 lineman and go, Fine. this is my coach. I and don't care stupid. at that point. Then you just have more clutter on the table. That's at least something. I don't I just, care. It's, overall, I hate the rule of yes. argue the call. It's yeah. just dumb. Yeah. Grumpy old man talk. But yeah. It's just stupid. I don't like it. Well, I don't either. Meh. Yeah, I mean yeah. they took our jobs. You can foul every turn and never get caught. Well, if you roll sixes every freaking time, but still, it's possible. Anyways, I played Kramer. He dominated the first half. I was getting oh, I lost both my train men in the first two turns. <laughs> I mean, jeez, gone. Yeah, gone for the rest of the game. And my team was halflings with two train men with pro. Zara, um, Willow Rosebark, because I was thinking that's kind of like a third tree. Yeah. Stronger than a halfling. And then I had two halflings with sure feet. I took their, they have packages. So you can take six regular skills, uh, four regular skills and a double, or two doubles and two regulars. And I thought with halflings, what? I have to take the double ones because I need either yeah. block on somebody or something. So I went with, the, I tried the pro thing of you. Yeah. I also had a halfling chef. I took no rerolls. So I had like a roster of, I think, 14 characters, no rerolls. So I relied on my halfling chef. But the star player is loner. Willow has loner. The two trees have pro. And all you the have halflings built in have dodge. built in dodge. And I have the sure feet for the extra movement. Just so, your hands? I did not. So that was like the only thing you'd have to re-roll. Right. So I didn't need a lot of rerolls. Anyways, he was marching down the field, got rid of my treatment right off the bat. Um, Willow didn't make it too much longer. I was at a point where I was like, eh, I got to try something. The way he built his team, he had a ton of guards. So he had naked runners, no block on them. Just the sure hands. Okay. You know, the theory of the is theory if of, I protect them yeah. enough... They shouldn't be getting hit. Shouldn't be getting hit anyways. Yeah. So why um, put skills on someone that's never going to get hit? I did some crazy stuff, and I dodged into, like, a partial cage or whatever. I think 
I, the side that didn't have the guard or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I got a straight up two die block his choice. I rolled double pows. Jeez. I knocked the ball loose, which was just enough. Um, the ball bounced around. I got the ball. If I would have went to the left, I don't think he would have caught me. It had been really hard for him to catch me. For some reason, you know how in football games that guys just go with the momentum. If they're going towards the yeah. right, they keep running up the right sidelines, yeah. and then they eventually get caught. And you, you look at the field and go, man, if he would have ran left, he'd have been wide open. It was one of those deals. <laughs> I guess the old football guy and me thought, that's the way, you know, inertia's taking us. Let's go that way. Yeah. Um, I got within like, three or four you know squares from the touchdown and he tackled me um first half ended zero zero jeez i was very happy uh, i thought i was getting rid of like his his um chainsaw, chainsaw and stuff he had a bribe i think that's where he spent a lot more of his money too um so we went back to the second half i got the ball <laughs> He chainsawed the crap out of Zara. She never went off the field the first half. The second half, it was just halflings and Zara. And I drove as best I could. He started to overwhelm me. Um, I think the ball went out of bounds. He knocked Zara off the field, casualtyed her. Ball went down the field. He picked it up. The only thing I could do was put bases on him, you know, tackle zones on his characters. If there was one and a half minutes left, he would have beaten me. Matter of fact, he called. They did the thing of when they call time, you finish that action, okay? Not the turn, yeah. That action. He called a blitz to just push the halfling off the runner, and yeah. then he could have ran in. Oh man, we, we tied zero zero. Jeez, I should have lost. Yeah, uh, but I'll take it. Okay. <clears throat> you know. I think the first half, he also tripped going into the end zone, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong on that. I, I know another game ended that way, too. Um, second game, I played Andrew Miller. Um, he's a guy who won the 3 dub brawl a couple of years ago with Orcs. Uh, he had Underworld. Um, once again, the, I was doing good for about the first three turns, and then just momentum shifted, and everything crumbled. And... I must have rolled, you know, like one to get up on the tree man. Uh Okay, well, I'm going to use pro. Six on the pro, then one again. I Jeez. mean, like pro worked a lot, yeah. but it never got me the result I needed. And he would, his glart was shredding Zara, Willow, and the trees. I mean, just just like you hear you know, them giving advice, like, oh, you just take the claw and you hit the guys and you, you're casualty them. Mm-hmm. So many stuns. Long story short, uh, I managed to stop him. He gets the ball from me because I receive. Um, he casualties Zara. So I play without Zara this whole game. Um, I stop him, though. Um, I think, again, it was like a one-die block or something like that. I stop him. It's 0-0 zero, zero at halftime, but he's going to get the ball back. He drives down. Trees still aren't doing nothing. I mean, the pro is working, but it's not giving me the results I want. So okay. once my trees were, like, on the ground, they stayed on the ground a lot. Jeez. Like, I just couldn't yeah. stand them up. And um, he scored, like, on the last play. There's nothing I could do. I was out of rerolls. Tried everything. We set up for the one turn score to throw a halfling. I got lucky with the, the kickoff bounce. I get all my rolls. I get like six rolls that I needed and you know, I got the perfect scatter. Yeah. I, you know, I, I dodged the, the couple tackle zones. I get the, the go for it and I score a touchdown and I was so happy. <laughs> I had to leave the building Jeez. because I didn't, I just, I couldn't get it out of, I, I had to like scream and holler. And right. it was like when the Patriots came back and won that game, I was so happy, but I didn't want to do that to him because he did everything right. Right. He did everything right, and he dominated the game. Yeah, on three-day block, they were like, oh, he said that Scott left the building. He didn't know why. He thought maybe he was upset. <laughs> no, I was really happy, and I didn't. Let's put it this way. If I was him, I would have been pissed. Yeah. Not at the player, but just at the results. Circumstances. Yeah. yeah that's Blood Bowl. Right. So I tie again. I'm, I have two ties with my halflings. Uh, we break for lunch. I don't even, we went to some burrito place. That was like Chipotle, 
Except when they mix all your they, all your little things on your burrito, yeah. they stir it together so every bite has like your sour cream in it or it's rice it in be. it. It's pretty good. Um, I didn't know this, so I got a salad the first time because we ate there twice. <laughs> um, came back at this point, Jennifer. She faced Chance, and then she faced some Bretonians. So she was zero and two at this point. Yeah, but Chance was playing. He was playing corn. Okay. And the other guy was playing Bretonians. So technically. Two games in, no record. No record. It's like taking two walks in baseball. Yeah, exactly. Because they don't count. No at bats. Uh, we come back. I am paired up against Wes. Every year, um, every year we've been up to three die brawl. I played Wes. <laughs> he beat me the first year. I beat him the second year. Hmm. This year, we had a great game. What was he playing? He was playing uh, Pro Elves. Okay. We had a really good game. I I scored on him. I was up one to nothing. And I was in really good control of this game. And it all came down to, like, I had, like, this cage. And I was slowly plotting down, trying not to move too fast. And he just takes a, a block, which he knocks a halfling onto the ball, which bounces, like, Anywhere it bounces except for, like, let's let's say it's the three. If if it doesn't do two threes or whatever, you know, I'm, I'm still fine. I have yeah. tackle zones on it and stuff. It bounced right to his guy who missed it, and then it did, like, another three yeah. at the angle. So now there was no tackle zones on it. Yeah. So then he just scooped it up, handed it off to the catcher down the field. Then he sits, you know, sits there and waits to score, and we tie one-to-one. Jeez. It was a really, really good game. Yeah. Um, but that's just how it goes. So I have three ties at this point. Uh, Jennifer plays a Nurgle team, and um, I believe she wins. Mm -hmm. um, so going into the final round, I was like, huh, I wonder who I play, you know, all this stuff. You know, like, There was another stunty team there, so there was two of us, so I was really – I took my St. Louis ham, so I really wanted to kind of win the stunty cup. Yeah. And uh, I played uh, some apes, which was like, meh, because... <laughs> you don't enjoy the extra teams. Win or lose, I don't like it. Yeah. Because I enjoy the NAF not really for my ranking, but to keep records, like stats. Yeah. I mean, really unfairly, I have a loss with my vampires, and it's not noted on the NAF record, because last year I played a corn team and got beat. Yeah. Anyways, I was playing some apes. I'm not familiar with their skills, obviously, because I don't pay attention to them any other time. Mm -hmm. This team was full on tons of guard. I somehow won two nothing. <laughs> Jeez. But I felt like he beat me up the whole time. He really focused on my trees, which I don't know if that was a mistake or that's not. An, that's always a mistake. It did help, too. Uh, oddly enough, come into play next segment. I believe his name was Dustin. He went to lunch with me and Jennifer. Nice guy. Um, he was going for the Dirty Deeds Award, yeah. uh, or at that point, he realized at lunch, he was saying, like, well, I've, I've been caught fouling so much, I'm, I hope I get that award. I might as well just try it now. And the I Dirty Deeds is being caught fouling. Caught fouling. So okay. he tried to foul fairly often. That probably helped me. He never got called, though, which didn't help me. Hmm. I guess in hindsight, it didn't help me. But he was focused on that a little bit, probably more than trying to win. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, I went one win that doesn't count and three ties with my halflings. And sadly, I think my NAF ranking is going to go down because of the, I played new teams. Yeah. So, it's weird to say I did that with halflings, but my ranking's going to go down. I did get Stunty Cup. That's good. Uh, Jennifer tied her last game. Yeah. And so, officially with Dwarf, she's like one win and one tie. Nice. And then she picked up the um, most sports award up there. They call it like the Deacon Award or something yeah. like that. And you can get more information about that on your guys' interview on 3 Dot Block. Yeah, we're over there on 3 Dot Block, last 3 Dot Block. Um, she was really happy. She was, she was like, I want to win, but I want to try to get most casualties. She got 12 casualties. She was tied. She tied. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And then uh, they did a drawing. So they had like three prizes. I won the T-shirt. And Jennifer won the Legacy team. So she has a painted Underworld team. And uh, I was like, I hate to break this to you, but um, they're not dwarves. Right. <laughs> they don't come with blocks. Whole different type of play yeah. style. Um, 
Then we went out to Forbidden Planet, which is the pizza place that you've been to. Yeah. And me and Drew had our crazy pizza. You got a little tipsy. I think Drew got tipsy. No, I got tipsy. <laughs> it was pretty fun. But those guys, they don't know me. They think, like, I'm really drunk and I'm not really drunk. It's like, I'm fun, Scott. Okay. And they're like, you're talking to strangers. And I was like, I just asked her to take a picture of us. It's not bad. You guys overreact. You straight edge steed people. The sober people are wrong. The drunk guy is right. Right. Okay. Correct. Fair enough. We had a lot of fun. I got to talk to Duder's wife. Yeah. Uh, piled around with all the, about half the guys went. There was eight of us. Um, then we went and had ice cream, which was really delicious, probably because I was drunk. That'll help. <laughs> went home, went to sleep. We had a choice. Drive home early or stay for the brawl. I'm not... I like the brawl in theory. I've always said, like, I don't think I would have fun playing it. I'd have more fun drafting it. In the past, we'd never stayed because we can't... Yeah. Just the extra time off and everything. I went ahead and took the day off since I was with Jennifer and stuff. She didn't want to play, but she's like, you go play, I'll watch. You know, that's a yeah. little overwhelming for me. Being and they my did first the drafting tournament. live on Facebook, so you can actually go on to their Facebook feed and see that. Oh, you can see that? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we did the, the draft. Um, there was eight of us. It was pretty cool and interesting. It was, they really were strict on their times. Like, you get a minute or two minutes or whatever it was. Yeah. And that was a little overwhelming to me, but... I get why they do it. Otherwise, you're going to sit there for four hours drafting players. Because you have a budget and you're drafting, you know, Mm -hmm. X amount of rounds plus a budget. It was just a lot to think about. Um, I can't remember my total team. I I got a, I know I got a werewolf. I know I got the, I got the Frankenstein guy, the flesh golem. Yeah. I had some, a pit fighter and some guys from the corn team and a Bretonian knight. Not a bad little team. Not a great team. I did, I think, Elf Blitzer. Anyway, so I I drafted my whole team. I the most probably the most fun <clears throat> was I named my team from an old second edition team that Robert used to run called the Coraline Beasts, which mm-hmm. was basically like kind of like the Chaos All Stars, mixed race team, goofy characters, and all that stuff. So then I went through and I named every one of my players. <laughs> the stress of trying to name your players in like 15 minutes. But I took them. I named all old second edition players because I knew that would make it fun for me. Sure. Um, round one, I played a guy named, uh, he goes by Aussie. His name's Dennis. He he won the casualty award the first night, and he was going to try that again on the draft. And I played him. Uh, long story short, I won. He beat the hell out of me. Like, beat the hell out of me. <laughs> the whole weekend was beat the hell out of Scott. Right. But you expect that with halflings. So, yeah. so uh, I won the first game. I think it was 2 nothing. Second game, I played a guy named uh, Nick, I believe. Nick Rudinsky. Ruzanski. He's a... Uh, he knows Darren from... Um, what's the other podcast? Two Dice Uphill. Oh, okay. When Darren used yeah. to be up there in Iowa. Um Played him, nice guy. He just kicked my butt, and I was not happy. And fatigue was setting in. Oh, yeah. I can imagine. It, this was game six of the weekend. You know, this sounds like sour grapes, but at, I got beat. Game three happens. I play a guy. I think his name was AJ from the Wisconsin area. Um. We played, he really should have beat me. He tripped, he for sure tripped going on the goal line the first half. Yeah. And then the second half, some shenanigans happened. Maybe he tripped again or something. Anyways, we ended up tying. But he dominated pretty much the whole game. By the seventh game or game three of the draft, it was, I was done. I was really fried. I really wanted to give up. I just didn't care anymore because there's only a few prizes to play for. Mm Mm-hmm. I didn't even have my NAF rank, ranking to like or my record because none of it's on the record. Yeah. So it's I, I was like, <laughs> I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but it just felt like I could be taking a nap right now. But I got I got to finish one more game and try to be a good sport about it. And I was just 
tired. And Jennifer's over there playing games with Kramer, and I was right. like, I could be playing board games right now. But so I didn't want to quit. You were doing the thing that you hate everyone else does. I did not give up, right? Though. I did not give up. I tried with everything I had, and I squeaked out a tie somehow. But I wanted to quit. Yeah. It was just long. And to, the whole weekend in a nutshell was Scott gets destroyed casualty-wise, mm-hmm. which is fine with halflings. You can accept that. The second day, I was not ready for it again, and it still happened. Just left and right, peeling guys off the field. It was frustrating. Yeah. And I hardly casualtyed anybody. So I went 1-1-1 one, one, and one with the Braft. I wish there was more people that named their team cool names and sure. stuff. But, I mean, it's the Braft. I mean, who's going to do that except for, like, me and maybe you? They should probably have names going in to um, make it easier. You know, they had an award for, like, the best theme. But <laughs> to be fair, I didn't tell everybody, like, hey, this is my old second edition thing. Yeah. Because I... And I, I'm I sure most people didn't look at your roster that close. Nobody did, so maybe I, I should have played that up more. But I didn't want to just like, what is that called when you're pumping up your own self to make yourself jacking look? Jacking off. Jacking off myself to mm-hmm. make myself look, try Better. to win an award. Yeah. Anyways, it was nice. They had some different awards. Uh, they expanded it from first place to then you got, they had like first place, best offense, uh, most casualties, and best theme. Okay. So... Pretty cool. Drew ended up winning that. Um, I will say this. What do you think about this? Best offense. What is the counter to best offense? What's the opposite? If you're giving best offense award, to me it's best Best defense. defense. Yeah. I've heard people say, no, that's most casualties is for like a defensive team. And to me it's like it's totally different though. But nobody plays for defense. People play for casualties. So what they're saying is there are two schools of thought in the game. One, you're going to score, or one, you're going to bash. So in Blood Bowl, yes, the so opposite So you're saying of, from like a star player point category-wise, those are two things you can go for. No, what I'm saying is Touchdowns in and... Blood Bowl, the way to play the game is okay. either to win by scoring or enjoy yourself and get the most casualties. Okay. Nobody at any point ever cares about most defense. Okay, that's fine. That's yeah. I, I was just curious yeah, because yeah. I've heard the argument. No, if you just ask I'll, me straight off, I'm going to say the opposite of offense is defense. Sure. But in Blood Bowl, yes. See, in my mind, you if you're going to do best offense, you do best defense, and then you have the casualty award is another thing. I mean, again, I know they're growing their brand, so I'm not it, complaining. If we're, if we're getting into a discussion of this, is best defense even a good – award to give out because everybody's trying not to let someone score sure or there are times when you do let someone score I so get it. it's kind of an arbitrary thing sure i mean blood bowl's weird anyways yeah. usually not all the time but whoever wins it probably has yeah. the best defense or the best offense or the most casualties if not a little bit of both now that i'm thinking about this i'm i'm, I'm disliking the idea of giving a best defense award Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah. Don't because, do that. That's the only ones I ever get. <laughs> yeah, but there's really no reason to give it. Because well, like there I said, there are, re- there are times when you do let somebody score. It doesn't matter if you win two to one or you win one well, to nothing. I, I disagree with that. Okay. Just I mean, saying. it's a stat that they take on the NAF, surprisingly. Besides wins and losses, they actually have defense or touchdowns for and touchdowns against. Sure. So, But that's how they get, keep track of... Yeah, what, whatever. Okay. I didn't mean to like discredit this. Yeah. I was just curious. So I had a good, really, overall, I had a really good weekend blood bowl wise, despite me getting tired. <laughs> yeah. Uh, had overall two wins, uh, four ties and only one loss. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, would you ever do the craft again? Only if I had a day to recover because I, Driving back all from Iowa one day mm-hmm. is very close to driving back from Chicago all in one day. Meaning, I wish I had that Tuesday off. I had well, to go sure. to work the next yeah. day. I was really tired. Um, I'm glad I got to experience it. I, I probably had more fun drafting, naming my players, and, you know, 
it would to me if you could do it with your buddies draft your league draft a league not a tournament does that make sense yeah you it does. draft yeah and those are your positionals going forward you play you build up your star player points if, yeah if your werewolf gets killed you can buy one more werewolf to replace him and you play a small league that might be more fun to me be kind of neat if you couldn't buy another werewolf. You just had to buy whatever was left. Or, or that. I'm just saying it was interesting, but now I, probably Finicky Scott, if, if I won the thing, I would have said it was an amazing thing ever. Sure. But I don't think I really no. would have because it's never been like I have to do it, but I'm glad I did get to experience I can I can see why people love it, though. It's never appealed to me. I don't see how it ever would. They, I probably would have liked it more. This is just me. If they didn't have the extra three races, yeah, um, the the corn, the slant, uh, the Bretonian, the Bretonian apes. apes. Once again, not real familiar with them. It was awesome though. They had all their miniatures painted, mm-hmm. and they just had them out there. That was that was really nice. Yeah, like r- super nice. And I even like was I went over there. I was like, this is not Rebel Crunch. And then I because I, they had two. P- pods of players mm-hmm. so i looked for like the goblin that i'd like the colors the best and yeah. moved them over so that was pretty fun no it is awesome and drew's put a lot they all put a lot of work into that and you have to experience it it really i think drafting means a lot obviously yeah um tim lyons did not get the first pick and he got third pick he got third pick and still the war dancer was left when it got to him mm-hmm. he drafted the uh dwarf death dwarf death roller and his argue the call saved it one time and he didn't have a model but it was part of the rules yeah so i mean if when i fouled if i would have got caught i would argue the call because everybody's playing under that rule so same rules for everybody overall fun time but by game three it wasn't my opponent's fault. It was it was just Blood Bowl. Nuffle had me worn down, slick, and mm-hmm. I saw people playing board games, and I was like, I'd rather be over there or taking a <laughs> nap or whatever. Calgon, take me away. Exactly. Well, and Drew's place is about 40 minutes or so from the store, so we had a drive. You know, just the, yeah. I, I, I want to get home and relax. Yeah. And especially when you know you got to get up at like 6 the next morning and drive for 10 plus hours. It's not that long. Yes, it is. No. Yes, it is. That was nine. It's not nine hours. Okay. It's ten at my speed. Okay. But, no, we had a good time. Jennifer had a really good time. She was exhausted. Uh, When we drove up there, I told her, I was like, you realize, I said, you're going to find this out. Going up there and hanging out is more fun than the actual tournament. We're we're playing Blood Bowl. Sure. And that's the reason we're getting together. But we're really going to hang out. And she even said, like. This was really fun just to kind of hang out and get to know people and stuff. The honestly, community. that's one thing about the Immortal Cup, like I said, versus having it at a hotel versus a venue. The hotel, you do get to hang out with everybody. You do get to see everybody. It becomes a communal thing. Having it at the venue is just like you show up, you do your thing, and you are gone again. Yeah, because you're mainly hanging yeah. out with the people that you drove with or yeah. whatever. And we could have, I mean, we like you said, we went out to and his crew I mean, we could have tried to get more people, but even with him and us, it was like one guy wanted to do sushi. One guy's like, oh, I'm not going to do sushi. I can't do that. And then one guy's like, well, I want to go here. And then we went to Texas Roadhouse, but Scott Hess went there the night before. So blah, blah, blah. Sure. That's just two groups. You get more people together, it becomes even more of a hassle. Well, I mean, something like a Chaos Cup. It's real easy that if you don't want to do something, there's, there's a ton of people. There's yeah. eight people going somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. And you can, and you want to hang out with them anyway. So, we had a good time. She really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know if she's hooked on Blood Bowl, but she's <laughs> she wants to go up to Emerald City Cup with us. That's cool. She's working on trying to get a sitter and give it another shot and see if she liked it. But I mean, I think for me, Blood Bowl. Is really fun, but the hanging out and meeting yeah, people, and, absolutely. You know, just talking, being people, having an excuse to travel. That's it was, a lot it of was fun. cool meeting new people again. Like I said, the Matthew Kramer or Kramer, awesome guy. You know, Duder's awesome as always and stuff. So, really good time. Okay, I guess that'll wrap that up, and we'll be. I right. don't know what else to talk about. We good. went by the Kalachi factory on the way home. Sure. Yeah. Oh, we went to Arthur Bryant's. <gasps> I didn't tell you that. Okay. In Kansas City on the way home. Yes. We stopped by Arthur Bryant's where we've ate every year going up 
to Drew's place. Yeah. They St. open. Louis. They open at ten o'clock. Okay. No, it's not St. Louis. It's in Kansas City. Kansas cool. City. Duh. Sorry. It was good. And the guy who said you had a Flash Gordon shirt yeah. on, he was still working there. <laughs> hey, Flash Gordon. Yep. He Flash. Was, he was, and I did not have a Flash Gordon T-shirt on. I had a Flash superhero. Superhero. Shirt. And he goes, Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon. <laughs> Say to uh, one of us. The same wonderful personalities at Arthur Bryant's as always. The food was really good. She was really happy. We got. Did to you get your there. food? Did you get? Did you order? Did you order? Did you? Uh, hey, you. Did that, you order? Dude, we got there right after eleven. It was packed to the gills. Yeah, but it was it was delicious. Good. So I was I was glad we got it. Anyways, then we came home. Yeah. So good trip. All right. Wrap this up. Come back with Spiky. Right, this segment, we're going to be talking about our recently run tournament, Spiky 5.5. Yes. Because as goblins will tell you, 5.5 is bigger than 5. And well, 5 and a 5 is bigger than 6. Yeah, so it's essentially Spiky 6. It's better than the Oklahoma Bowl 6, the stupid orcs. Exactly. So we'll just run another 5. So this is a way for us to catch up the tournaments and make use of In a weird some goblin dice. way. Yeah. yeah. Um, we had 10 people. We did have 10 people. About as many as I expected. I figured about 8 to 10. There were no prizes. There was not really any giveaways. There was not really any trophies. There was all certificates. Not really. There was no trophies. There were no trophies. We did all certificates. The entry fee was just 10 bucks. Yeah. We did give away a... Everybody got two sets of dice. A slant team. We gave away a slant team. Yeah. And uh, we did two sets of dice for everybody. Yeah. It was pretty it was fun. A lot of fun. Three rounds. You worked the rules where every round was kind of an ode to the old. I basically incorporated every Spiky Cup into this tournament. Right. So there was a special kickoff table from Spiky 4. There was, in your team build, you got to pick a sponsorship, which was from Spiky Spiky 2. Mm -hmm. So different shoe sponsorships. And then round one, everybody got to roll... To see what secret weapon they got. Spiky one. And then round two, everybody got a doom roller of some sort. Spiky three. And then round three, everybody got a hat. Spiky five. Yep. And spiky four was, was the chrome table. with the kickoff table. Yeah. Did you already say that? Yeah. Oh, wow. So I've been having a lot of Zemus. Yep. But yes. <laughs> So it was a lot of fun. Uh, I, myself, mm. took the Maw Mouth Masticators, a Nurgle team. What is a masticator? Chewing is masticating. So the chewers. The masticating masturbators. No. Masticators. Masticator. No masturbating. Masticators. Where did you come up with that? You did, did you learn that in a book? It's a, it's a scientific term for chewing. So did I you watch a documentary to hear about a masticator? So I'm a masticator. Something I've learned in So tomorrow school. I can call my dad a masticator. Yeah. If he's chewing food. It's probably why I remember it so well is because of the juvenile you know, humor of masturbator, masticator. Sure. Okay. Maw mouth masticators. Yeah. Okay. So I just, I didn't know what to do. So I just threw together my Nurgle team real quick since it's already in my case. You're never going to play with the same team twice at tournaments, are you? What do you mean? Every team you come up with. You already had a Nurgle team that you played before. To, to be fair, I did. And they were called the Rotted Tooth. They were based off the team that I found in the second edition set sure. that I bought. So this was an homage to that. So Tooth, Mouth, Maw from the field, Maw, Mouth, and sure. then Tooth, Masticating, Chewing. Gotcha. And then all the the positions were named after different types of teeth and different parts of the mouth. Hmm. Um, but I actually had the team name and that stuff made for, I believe it was Spiky this year when I didn't get to play. I made a team just in case. So I used that same uh, name and everything. Gotcha. I took the Washington Deadskins, Kimry. I um, had a team build, and I thought, this sounds similar to Chance's build, who won Spiky five yeah and i talked to him just a little bit and he said oh i switched this and this and it was like 
just uploading lots of block and mighty blow on the tomb guardians. And then I had some tackles sprinkled in and stuff. And he said, no, I went with, um, tomb guardians block mighty blow, just like you, but I had two mighty blows on the blitz Ross just went full board mighty blow just to beat up people. Mm -hmm. We talked about it and I was, you know, (laughs) I don't want to me and mighty blow. It just, mm, yeah, it doesn't mm, work. mm. But I thought, why not? It's spiky. It's only three rounds. There's no way I can get pissed off in three rounds. Let's go to the games. You can always get pissed off in three rounds. Oh, yeah. You can get pissed off in one round. So My team, I, like I said, I threw it together in like three minutes. So I just went real easy. Four warriors with block and mighty blow. And then a beast with pro block. Two pestigores and five rotters. So Pro and block on the beast? Yeah. That's cool. So speaking of pro, what did you think about pro on the trees? Because we didn't get to talk about that. And that this is the first time you took what I like is the pro on the big guys instead of block. Especially would, on a tree because you're not going to have people hitting your trees. So for the whole weekend at Spiky Cup, I might have said this last time, um, I only rolled one double skull the whole weekend at 3 dot Brawl. Okay. So probably pro was better than block overall yeah it's just it was really hot and cold yeah i mean it's it, a 50, it was like 50, so. super hot and cold some some games or some halves really i look like a genius mm-hmm. by doing that and other times it was just like well that's a wasted skill yeah it's never something you can count on but it always gives For you sure. that extra possibility i would say it helped more often than it did not and it was mainly on like the rooted rolls and stuff like yeah. that so that's cool did you remember to use the uh, timber rule? I did. Okay. Forgot about that. Yeah, as well. So did I. I didn't even have it on my skill chart. So Yeah. Hey, my first... So, obviously, with 10 people I played. So, um, I went up against Will Schaefer and his Little Horrors halfling team. He had two tree men with grab and multi-block. And then various halflings with different skills and stuff. He randomly got uh, the, uh, what, let's see what weapon did he get? Chainsaw? No, I got chainsaw. I don't remember what he got. He got, oh, he got. Paul uh, Chain? No. Bomb? It's one that gave you Hypnogaze, Foul Appearance, and Dirty Player. No, oh. that that was the. That was the shoes. That was the shoe that he got. He got the kicking boots. Okay. So. He can foul more. Yeah, he can foul more. Uh, so, started off this game, he was, I I completely forgot he had multi-block. So, I kicked off to him, and I put four of my guys on the line. Well, five, including the beast. Mm-hmm. Uh, he knocked down four Chaos Warriors <laughs> in that first turn, because I totally just wasn't paying attention, didn't expect to be playing, and boned it. So, that sucked. Took me a while to get back up and running. He was hurting people, and it was not going well. But then I started uh, breaking his armor and getting him down. And at lunch, he's like, why didn't you go after my trees with the chainsaw? Because I ended up getting a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. He's like, why didn't you go after the trees? I go, because I went after your halflings. As you noticed, I was getting rid of a halfling every turn with a chainsaw pretty Mm -hmm. much. So I'd hit one, or if one was down, I'd foul because we got free bribes. And I I just ended up getting rid of a lot of people. I had four casualties to his three. And I think he got three in probably the first half. Mm. First half of the first half. And then I got four just, and I got so many knockouts on him and everything. I ended up winning two to nothing. Nice. And... Do you want to go back and forth, or you want me to just do all mine? I'll go ahead and do all yours. That's fine. Okay. So the second round, I went up against Brownstone with his Backsheared Anvil Tigers, which is the same team that he took to Chaos Cup, because since he did so poorly, he was wanting to... You mean a Moracle Cup? A Moracle Cup. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Uh, he wanted to get a little bit of revenge for his uh, Chaos Dwarves. So he had two Bull Centaurs with Block, Mighty Blow, and Break Tackle. A uh, Minotaur with Block and Claws, uh, Sure Arms, Hobgoblin that ended up getting extra arms, Sure Hands, whatever. 
And he had the sponsorship that gave him Sneaky Git and Dirty Player on a Hobgoblin. And somehow or another, I mean, his dice were just failing him left and right. I out casually him five to two. And I won one to nothing. That's pretty impressive. I th- a lot of this was because I got the Killdozer Light, which gave me a seven strength. Mm-hmm. So I was able to multiple times three die block his bull centaurs oh well so that helps yeah and then round three round one and two i got if i didn't have the chainsaw and i didn't have the kill dozer things might have been different they might have been a little too powerful but hey before you go to round three yeah we know you're in the finals most likely i am in the finals all right so let's let's stop there for a second okay round one i played michael grubb a local player um, he brought his orcs. I can't remember his team's name. The Green Meanies, I think. I think so, yeah. Like that. Um, standard kind of orc build, some blocks, some mighty blow, stuff like that. Um, I had my Camry team. I got like a couple of casualties right off the bat mm-hmm. against his orcs. You know, which you don't expect to get many but with all that mighty blow i thought that was pretty good playing the high armor team yeah i ended up winning two to nothing in that game he had a bombardier he got a bombardier for his secret weapon i got a bombardier for my secret weapon (laughs) at one point in the game he threw a bomb at me i caught it i threw it back he caught it he threw it back i caught it I threw it back. He caught it. He threw it back. Giant explosion. Like, knocked down four or five guys. Jeez. His bombardier, he also threw, like, a long bomb and hit the ball carrier in the first half. Just <laughs> the only guy he could hit. He threw the bomb, hit him, knocked him down. His, his bombardier was amazing. So we came up with the fluff <laughs> wow. that... This was an orc that wanted to be a thrower, and they said, no, kid, you're, you're a lineman. And he's like, no, I really can do it. Mm-hmm. So they go, all right, kid, we're going to give you the, the bombs. And I told him that he needs to nickname him in the league, Dabama. Yeah. And um, thanks, Dabama. He did. Exactly. <laughs> he did great for about the first 10 plays and then like the last six plays of the games he was like fumbling it and everything else <laughs> like it was almost like in the in the game he got really cocky and like at halftime they're all patting him on the back good job man mm-hmm. good job and he kind of got the big hit yeah if you keep this up kid you're gonna be the, our next thrower oh yeah and then he went out there and shit the bed <laughs> it was really funny uh my thrower did not do so well my bomber uh but anyways i won like two nothing i think i got two or three casualties on him not bad with my Mighty Blow stuff. Right. It's going to work today. Uh, game two, I played Joseph Roberts. He was playing his, I think it was Kansas City Crips. Yep. Uh, it was an undead team. I got the snot wagon kind of death roller thing. I can't remember which one he got. Um, really, I felt like I was in full control of the game. Wasn't getting casualties, but drove up the field, you know, slow rolling the cage. I I don't think I got greedy, but I thought I had to get in position and go for it once with a Tomb Guardian to just kind of get this cloud going to give yeah. really to give Ro- Joe Roberts like no chance to get to my guy because it it would put like three more tackle zones in the area that he had the small chance of getting through anyways. Yeah. I roll a 1. No big deal. Reroll 1. Still not a big deal. He has to make like four or five rolls to even get a one die block of my guy. Well, he ends up doing it, knocks the ball loose. The ball goes the opposite way, Jeez. scatter wise. It's just one of those deals where it just crumbles. Well, uh, the odds are really in your favor, but there's still odds. Right. Uh, I still get a chance to kind of pick up the ball and throw with Kimry. Uh, I don't do it. So it's, it's 0 0 at halftime, but I'm kicking off to him. He is. In the meantime, just peeling off players left and right yeah. off the field. Um, second half happens. I just get destroyed. Um, he was. I was basically forced to like, well, I'm going to dodge into your cage. 
really with Kimry? I was like, what else do I have? The reroll's the best thing I have right now. Because mm-hmm. otherwise, you're going to grind it down, and I'm going to lose one to nothing. So I might as well try to hit you yeah. while I can. And I pray that the ball goes out of bounds and thrown upfield. I never made any of those. So, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I lost one to nothing. I even asked him, because I was really frustrated. and I was Because my mighty blow wasn't working at all. Didn't work at all. Not at all in this game. And I was just getting players removed left and right. He's like, no. He was like, you played right. He's like, it's just, you know, the dice got you. He's like, I don't even think that was the wrong move by positioning that guy to do the go for it. He's like, that was the right move, too. He's like, you just failed two ones, you know. So I didn't feel so bad. So lost one to nothing. And then my final game, I played Scott Hess, which is always a tough game. It doesn't matter who he, what team he plays with. Um, First half... I still didn't get main casualties on him with all that mighty blow because I can't knock him. What was him. he playing? He had halflings, but in your rule set, halfling stunty teams can take double skills yeah. for normal price. Tons of blodgers. Oh, yeah. And I have no tackle. And my original build had some tackle. But I listened to like, oh, let's try this mighty blow team that won it. Um, long story short, I won the game. But it was only really because... Scott could have stalled out and get a tie one to one. He had numbers on the field. It was like ten halflings to at that time. I think I had five or six Kimry guys because I had so many knocked out. Because yeah. he was also peeling players off the field. His trees were spectacular with their mighty blow. His two mighty blow, just like in Joe's game, the two mummies mighty blow was more effective than my six. Um. He scored. He gave me three plays. But if I wouldn't have picked up the ball, he would have beat me because he would have been in the backfield and gone. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he said maybe I should have waited one more play to stall and only gave you two plays to do it. But he still stymied me up and stuff. I had to throw a pass. It failed. And then I had the last play. I had to, like, blitz a guy off, <laughs> all with no rerolls. Pick the ball up and like do two go for it. And I won two to one, but it sure didn't feel like it. I ended the day six mighty blows on some five strength guys or whatever, the Tomb Guardians, five casualties all day. I I think I had two or three that first game and against halflings and undead, none or one each or whatever, whatever it was. It was awful. I was so mad. I was probably. Bitch ass baby mad because it just it wasn't about winning or losing. It's like why why Scott why do you even Scott said he's like I was talking to him about it. And he's like, dude, you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses. He's like, you just gotta start playing that way. He's like, just because somebody else's advice works for them doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. He's yeah. like, he goes, I started learning that you know a couple of years ago about myself instead of listening to what everybody else does. Just play how you want to play. And, and I was honestly, like, you're right. We've had this discussion many times. We don't like Mighty Blow. For a tournament. It doesn't seem to ever pay off. No. And it And it does for really other people. We've seen it happen. Sure. We see it happen. It oh, didn't you really take pay one off for mine either to the big extent. I mean it I'm sure it helped somewhat, but not as much as you think it would. I, mean, I remember two years ago, uh, the fir- or whenever it was, the first year we first tournament we met Ken- Kendall Bowser. He had that dark elf team. He had one yeah. mighty blow and I thought why waste the skill with one mighty blow? And he's like, well, you just keep hitting with him and you peel guys off the field. And it worked for him. Yeah. But I had six and it didn't. Oh, so <sighs> frustrated. I went two and one with Kimry. Uh, I still, bonus points wise, it's spiky. I didn't get any because they don't get casualties. So, right. Anyways, the final match or what we thought was the top table, most likely, it was even the top those. Table. It was the top table, but Spikey's with overall points, so yeah. anybody could come out of nowhere with a really lucky game. And if you're unfamiliar with Spikey, every knockout is worth two points, and every casualty is worth four points. Right. So you really can get a ton of bonus points. So it was you versus Joe Roberts. Right. The Nurgle versus Undead. Yeah, and like you said, this is Kansas City Crips, two blocks on the mummies, mighty blow and tackle on one white, one white with guard, block on, both, on two ghouls, one with sure hands, and then... Wrestle on two other girls, and sneaky get dirty player on a zombie because of the indu- the uh, spiky shoes. The shoes, yeah. And this one, 
it just wasn't even close at all the whole time. From the kickoff, it felt like I was going to lose, and I lost. I lost two to nothing. I had three casualties to his one, but he just was able to pick up the ball and move and dodge around me. And just, Undead's just really good because they, got, they have a ton of skills. They just do. And they have speed. They have strength. They have everything. Yeah. And I just, I just didn't feel I had the speed to keep up with him. And he was able to match me pretty well with strength. He wasn't passing, so foul appearance. I mean, but when I sat across from him, I was like, I got him on strength. Mm -hmm. You know, because I got the Tomb Guardian stuff. But he's also a really good player, so that helps. No, he's a good player. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, I was looking at the matchup of Kimry versus, you know, like, what does he have different? And it was just like, well, zombies, it's not that big of a deal. But it is just a big deal. Yeah. It's just enough of those right areas, you know, that seven movement on the goal. It's what everybody knows. But Yeah. So Joseph Roberts won the tournament. Right. His first official tournament. When he came down, he stayed with us. Yeah. And he was even saying, like, I've never really won a tournament. So I, t- I took a little <laughs> bit more serious team. And, and boom, lo and he behold, won. He wins. Um, I'm going to try to remember the Michael the Lewis came in second. Michael Lewis came. Got, got, I thought maybe I'll get second this time or even third. And Michael Lewis Comes out of the box. Oh, he's like the Phoenix every yeah. time. That guy knocks me out of contention for first, second, or third every time. He's so, the anti-prime. Yeah, he's the Phoenix that kills me. Um, he got second. I got third. You got third. Um, I got best offense, believe it or not, right. <laughs> with Kimry. Wow. Um, Michael Grubb got best defense. Tim Walker got uh, most casualties. Yeah. Nick Thanks. Smith got... Fan favorite. Fan favorite. Um, Which is best painted, best theme or whatever. Right. Uh, Sportsman went to Joe Roberts again. Oh, did he get best sports too? Yeah. Doubled up on that, I think. Okay. I can't remember that one. Um, and then Stunty Cup went to uh, Will. Will Will Schaefer with yeah. his little horrors. Yeah. Just edging out Scott Hess's mm-hmm. halflings. So. Bonus points. I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, he destroyed Tim Walker. Tim Walker was not having a good turn. Tim, Wa- Tim also played Kimry. Yeah. His, I think, same build. He had a spiky cup and got second. Yeah. He, but we, he, he went up against... We collectively couldn't get casualties. And he, he played the will with his trees, and the trees took out his team. Like... He said by turn four, he was down to two people on the field or whatever. Oh, because of multi-block, too. Yeah. That, it was just destroying him. Yeah. The Kimry, I don't feel like I won two games. I feel like I was... It, Kimry just didn't do well. And I'm, right. I want to like Kimry. I just don't know what I need to do. I guess I should play it more if I want to get better. But I don't have the patience, so... Yeah, there I can't go. play the same team seven <laughs> tournaments in a row. So I, I understand. Anyways, it was fun. Yeah, we, it was a lot of fun. Most of us went to eat at a place called Johnny's Charcoal Broiler and had mm. a burger and stuff. So that was nice. I think everybody except for two people maybe went. Yeah, or maybe just one. My, Michael no, it was Grubb, two. Grubb and Hess. Scott Hess went. And got, he I went and had some beers, and Michael Grubb went home and yeah. seen the wife and kids. So yeah, so a lot of us went out to eat um, afterwards. We went to, a few of us went to Alfredo's, right? Yeah. That's when Jennifer came down or mm-hmm. met us. Michael Lewis, Joe Roberts, me and you, we went to Alfredo's. Which we is took him to place, real right Mexican food. And he got to enjoy, like we were talking about in the other story, all the plethora of free food. And at the end of it, I remember him smiling and goes, all of this was only $12? <laughs> yes. All of this? And I was like, this is why we're fat, Joe. Oh, yeah. This is why we go to Alfredo's way more than we probably should admit. He's like, even the sopapilla? Yes, that's free. Yeah, free sopapilla at the end. <laughs> it was... We kind of... Fat ate? What, what am I looking at? We were just tired, so we just ate. Oh, yeah. That was a night where I was not even hungry, but I was like, it's the food's in front of me. I'm going to keep eating. It was almost like we were high because everything was really good that night, too. <laughs> I've never been high. I'm surprised you have if you're a straight edge steed. Well, I'm not straight edge or a steed, so. Oh. You're not hung like a horse? Didn't say that. Oh, okay. Like a Lego horse? 
Miniature pony. Miniature pony. My little pony. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> Hung like a brony is not something um, we need to fuck. To wrap up Spikey, we came back to the house. We played a game of uh, DC Forever Evil. That yeah. went forever. Oh, Friday night, though, we played some awesome Fortune and Glory that Steve didn't even want to mention. No, no. Steve does not. <laughs> It's a horrible game. It's an amazing Indiana Jones like game. No, it is not. Oh, it's pulp fiction. If you it's pulp in, action. If you think Indiana Jones is just not convoluted enough, and you watch the librarians are like, "Wow, some knockoff Indiana Jones," and if I can just throw in maybe way too much complex complexity and more cards and rules than we ever need, that's the game for you. That's why I like it. If we ever do a board game, like special podcast, I'm going to talk about that just to make you mad. I don't care. <laughs> Anyways, we had a good time. Um, yeah, so next year uh, we will be on Oklahoma Bowl and Spiky Cup 7. Right. So in the fluff of everything, we're ne- Oklahoma Bowl weekend is the same number. Yep. Yay. And we'll be putting the dice that we had up on the website soon, too. Ooh. Can I buy some? If you want. How much are they? I think you probably have them. Oh. Just regular dice price, five bucks a pair. Nice. That's good. Just market price. Market price. Yep. All right. Okay. By the way, I'm sorry. Sure. I'm just rambling. Okay. I need more drinks. Well, we'll come back with shout outs and then we'll call tonight. Yes, sir. What time is it, Scott? It is uh, 11, 13 oh, okay. p.m. Yeah, I kind of figured. Oh, it's time for... I'm not doing it. Oh, come on. No. Come on. Shout outs with Straight Edge Steed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shout outs. Okay. I actually met somebody who said they liked me saying that. Dude said that. He said, yeah. that's fun. He's probably lying. He might, but he's a good liar. Yeah, that's true. He's a nice guy. Jennifer said he's adorable. No, she meant me. No, she said dude was adorable. Okay, fine. He's really a nice guy. He's adorable. God did not agree. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't hear that, that was really loud. That day. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean he's adorable? She's like, he's just adorable. So, yeah. you're like a teddy bear. She wants to hug you. Okay. Oh, I was shouting out dude yeah. For being adorable. Okay. Well, that's a good shout out. I don't think his wife will appreciate that. Why? He's an adorable man. I, I, she probably does appreciate that. I talked to her. She's pretty cool. <laughs> I think she's going to let him come down to Oklahoma Bowl next year. Well, hopefully. That'd be awesome. That would be awesome. Um, Since I did go to a Morgan Cup, I met a lot of people there that I had not met in person before. And uh, I just want to say hi to everybody there. So... Shout outs to Mark Perry, Jim Luft, Mark Zuckerman, Will Rogers, Anthony Baez, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So many people, like, I didn't even get, you know, saw Tristan, saw Dave, you know, I didn't really get a chance to talk to everybody. Sort of said hi to Alex and just all these people I know from Chaos Cup, but we're all just so busy trying to get everything running and then no downtime. So. Uh, I also wanted to give an apology to Brad Wales because apparently uh, he was kind of upset that I didn't in- ask him to join our Immortal Cup team. Okay. Because initially, he said a long time ago that he was wanting to go. And I was like, okay, well, I'll keep that in mind. I didn't think I was going to go. And then when Hess was talking about he really wanted to go, I was like, okay, well, then it'd be Hess, you, brownstone and me that's four people and then when you backed out it's like crap okay so who would be our fourth and we had already been talking about what teams to take so we're like okay well we need someone to take a tier one team tier four team yeah tier four team sorry one point team Mm -hmm. um and they're like oh wait joe roberts did really well with ogres at gen con he's played them a lot so he would be a great addition so we just ended up Asking him, didn't even think about going to Brad. 100% my fault. But I already apologized. He just said he'll just give me hell for it for the next five years or so. Well. Which is I, typical. I would give you hell too. Yeah. 
Brad, this is if if I was going, you would have been on my team. So really, you got to blame Scott because we, we've been called Team Zima with Grenadine. Okay, that's what our team name would it's be. A horrible name. That's just Mr. as good as your what was your Mister? I love fluff. the sack sack catchers. Yeah, the uh, Sacagawea catchers. Sacagawea catchers. Sack and Fox Nation. Sacks and Fox Nation. The Sack and Fox Nation. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's a bad Oklahoma Indian joke. <laughs> that is. You're going to make some people mad. I, sh- I should apologize to all people. Not you just should. Indians or Native Americans. Just all people. You should. You're an awful straight edge steed. Yeah. I wanted to give a shout out to Nate Beam, Nate Ball, and Mick Winter, Jeremiah Dillon, all for running the event. Went off pretty well. Had no major issues. It was a great time. Ton of people. And then Maelstrom Gaming, Jack over there, he did a great job getting our pitches done. And everybody has loved him. So if you ever need a neoprene pitch and you want to design one yourself, he is more than happy to take on a challenge. That's what I'm the most jealous about is I didn't get a field. Oh, they are awesome. I it know. makes me want to get more. I took your I expensive. took your field with me to the three dot brawl. Yeah. And I always wanted to play on it. It was awesome. It rolls so well. But dice really like to bounce off of it. Oh, I use a dice tower. That's true. I would like to shout out, of course, uh, Drew Bucciconi for once again taking care of us while we stayed the night up there. It was nice to see Chance and Tim Lyons once again. Um, all the coaches I played. Andrew Kramer, Wes, uh, Dustin, you know, Dennis, of course, AJ, and uh, Nick. And uh, I apologize uh, afterwards if um, I get really mad at math and the dice games. Sure. I don't think I was, I really don't think I was too bad off. I was way worse at Spiky Cup than I was up there. <laughs> I, I really kept my cool, but I was yeah. really. Um, everybody else I met up there at the Three Dot Brawl, Jeff Stegi and all those guys, it was really fun to hang out with everybody. And we had a good time. <clears throat> and I don't see any reason unless just can't get off work that we wouldn't go again. No, I, I really hated the fact that I wasn't able to get there. Uh, I, there might, some good news is is there might be some rule changes to the tournament that might go away from skill packages, which I hate tournament people. I hate skill packages. And there might be a intermediary tournament soon too. I have no idea what you're, you're moving your finger at me. I just did that for no reason. Are you going to try to put that finger somewhere? Is that, is this part of being a straight edge steed? I'm just saying that there's, we're talking about doing a tournament between the two podcasts. Dude, it's too late and I've had too many Zemas with red stuff in it. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to everybody who's written in. We've had a lot of great questions that we've answered and people asking for both down approval and all that. Did want to specifically mention David Rivera from Chile who has emailed us. So we officially have gotten emails from every continent besides Antarctica. And you don't count that? No. You think somebody's down there in like the what is the okay. the seed storage? Yeah. Well, no, can... that's uh, Norway, I think. Oh. The Doomsday Vault. Doomsday yeah. Vault. Okay. Yeah. No, there's uh, research stations there. Okay. So there, if anybody in the Air Force gets stationed in Antarctica and would like to listen to both down, let us know. Why'd you say up there? I don't know. You said up there. I did. Yeah. It's down there. Yeah. Arctic's in the north. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, I messed up. You might not have. Maybe I, I don't remember. I think you did something wrong. I probably did. I just like catching you yeah, doing something wrong. I think you were right. <laughs> what was that? You were right. Whoa. It's where all the penguins are. <laughs> Anyways, um, if you are listening and I don't know, if you haven't listened to Zlurpcast yet, the Kickstarter might be up soon. I don't know. But yeah. we'll uh, let you know. It would be wonderful if this thing funds and... And if you would like some art done by Scott Prime, his going rate is one million dollars. This is a way for you to make some money when you lose your job. <laughs> That's true. Uh, it's ending <laughs> soon. Might not be a chaos cup this year. You're going to chaos cup. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> I don't know. When I have time, I, I really would negotiate. Yeah. If somebody did want artwork, if but someone wants a logo or I, something, I am I am Johnny's little bitch for a while. Yeah. Because we got to get this project going, but it's been a learning process, and I'm sure there's a lot more to learn. 
I've also learned I think I am kind of getting drunk. Oh, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have that many. You've had at least three. Okay. I haven't had much to eat. That's probably why. And I went and ran tonight. Okay. And also, you've been drinking a lot, which tends to lead to drunkenness. What do you mean drinking a lot? Have you been drinking? Tonight? Yes. Yeah. That's, there you go. That right. usually is what leads to I'm being saying drunk. I really think I feel it. I think I'm tired, too. Yeah, that, too. It's late. Anyways, folks, we appreciate you. We're sorry that we went so long without uh, podcasting, but we're, it's pretty much Steve's fault. Hey, it's all of our fault. At least he we're said, not taking I'm not, off a whole I, He said, I am not in a podcast because I hate Brad Wells. Pretty sure that is not <laughs> And what I said, I what said? do you mean? And he crossed his hands and he goes, straight edge steed. And I was like, dude, you're into some weird stuff. And he's like, you don't understand me. You don't even like pops. And I'm like, what? Straight edge steed. And then he like pushed me down and he went off to his room. <laughs> That's the hard truth. And unfortunately, <laughs> it's it's just something we have to live with. <laughs> Good night, everybody. We'll see you next month. You can follow Both Down on Twitter at Both Down. You can follow Scott at Fat Finley, F-A-T-F-I-N-L-E-Y, and Steve at Kilowog2814. If you want to know if your team name is both down approved, send a tweet to at BD approved. If you'd like to email them, the email address is bothdownpodcasts at gmail.com. Or for more information, you can visit them at bothdown.com or at facebook.com forward slash bothdown. I'm just going to take that clip and <laughs> have so much fun with that. I'm dating a 14-year-old boy. <laughs> 14 or 13. Boy, 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 boy. <laughs> 14 or 13. <laughs> boy, 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 boy. I'm dating a 14-year-old boy. 14 or 13. 14 or 13. I'm dating a 14 year old boy. <laughs> boy, 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 boy. I'm dating a 14 year old boy. The sense of humor of a 14 or 13 year old boy. <laughs>